Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to introduce the notion of RxJS observable. In the previous lesson we have defined a stream of values which was an interval over time that was emitting the values 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Let's now create here using RxJS a definition of that stream. Notice that it's not an instance of the stream, it's a definition of that stream, a declaration of that stream. We can do that using the interval method from RxJS. We can call simply interval and you can specify here the interval of time that we will be using, in this case a thousand milliseconds, which is one second, and we will have here as the output of this a value that we can assign here to a variable. And we're going to call that variable simply interval dollar. So the dollar at the end means that this variable is an RxJS observable. If you check this with your ID, for example here using Control shift p you're going to see that this is an observable of number. So number is the parametric type of the observable. It specifies what values is this observable emitting. In this case, it's emitting numbers, the value 0, 1, 2, etc. We can confirm that indeed this interval method behaves like the native set interval that we have shown in the previous lesson by checking here the RxJS official documentation that we will be using throughout the course. So as you can see, when we call interval of 1000, we will have here the value 0, 1, 2, etc. emitted at this specified interval here of 1 second. Going back to our program, if we now reload the application and inspect the console, you might be surprised to find out that no values are getting emitted to the console. The first thing is that we are not specifying what to do with the values, there is no console log here in this small program, but also this interval variable here, interval dollar, this is not actually a stream of values. This is a definition for a stream of values. It's like a blueprint for how the stream will behave if we instantiate it. So let's create here a couple of different interval streams. An observable will only become a stream if we subscribe to it. And we are going to do that using here the subscribe method. Once we have subscribed to the observable, we have created a stream of values. And we are receiving those values here via the subscribe method. So let's now log these stream values to the console. We are going to call it stream1 and we are going to concatenate here the value of the stream. So now we have defined here a stream of values because we have called subscribe on the definition of the stream that we created using RxJS. A definition of a stream is an observable. If we now reload our program, we're going to see that now we have here in the console the values 1, 2, 3, etc. starting at 0 actually for stream number 1. Let's now go ahead and create a second stream so that we can see that indeed this interval variable which is an observable of number is indeed simply a template, a blueprint for creating a new stream. We are going to create here a new stream by copying here this line here. We are going to create here a second stream, we are going to call it stream2. Let's now refresh our application and see what this looks like here in the console. So as you can see, we have now two independent streams each emitting its own sequence of values once per second. RxJS provides us many other functions such as interval for defining other types of streams. Let's give another example of a different observable. Let's say that we want to wait initially for 3 seconds and only then start emitting values each second. To define this observable, instead of calling interval, we are going to call timer instead. Now timer takes two arguments. The first is the initial delay that we will wait before starting the stream of values. And the second argument is the time interval. So in this case we are waiting for 3 seconds before emitting the first value of our stream and then we will emit a new value each second. Let's have a look at this in action, we are going to refresh our application, let's open the console and see that 
only after three seconds the stream has started. I'm going to refresh the application again so that we can see here the behavior. So as we can see we have here three seconds before the emission of the first value. Now let's define a new stream that we have defined before using native APIs. We are going to define here a click stream. We can define a stream of clicks using the RxJS from event method. So the first argument that we need to pass to from event is going to be the source of the clicks. In this case, we are using the whole document, but this could be a specific button in the page. And the second argument is the event that we are subscribing to. In this case, it's going to be the native click event. Again, like the case here of the interval observable, this returns us only the definition of a stream. This is not an instance of a stream. So we are not specifying here what to do with the stream values. We have not yet instantiated a stream. Let's give a name to this observable that we are getting here as the result of calling from event. This is going to be called the click observable. It's a blueprint of a stream. Now, if we subscribe to it, then we are going to get the values emitted by this observable, which are going to be mouse click events. Let's confirm this by logging out these events to the console. Let's now test this new version of our program. If we now open here the console, we are going to see that we still have here this interval stream. We have here the values once per second, but now if we start clicking anywhere on the screen, we are going to see that we have here a separate stream of mouse events. So we have here two active streams, one derived here from the interval observable and the other derived here from the click observable. Click and interval are definitions of streams. These are observables. If we check here the type of click, we're going to see that this is an observable of a browser event. Now that we have introduced the notion of observable and that we understand the difference between streams and observables, let's now introduce a couple of core RxJS concepts. We are going to go deeper into the subscribe method and we're going to talk about stream errors and stream completion.